The fast answer is no, but the long answer is yes. Stick around if you know, or if you want to know, how Vault would win without evolving his Beyblade. Is that even possible? Could Vault win all his way to Beyblade Burst Quad Drive with Valtriac without one evolution? Valtaroy has been training in doing Kamehameha specials in the Beyblade Burst show as the main character and in later seasons as a recurring mentor for the next generation of bladers. He's helped groom some of the best blading talent from Igarak Kabane to Bale Dezera, showing us great sportsmanship and teamwork. He's always trusted and battled alongside his bay partner, Valtriac. We can safely say that he's a highly talented blader deserving of the title of Legend of Legends. But without evolving his Beyblade, his journey would not be easy and dare I say, impossible? A Beyblade evolution is central to the Beyblade Burst show, as in every season, bladers get stronger and find new ways to add gimmicks to their Beyblade parts. I've talked about the Beyblade evolutions in this video, all about how to defeat Fi, which I'll link in the description below as well. Vault has made many evolutions for Valtriac, but the one I've chosen for this Beyblade theory is his original Valtriac. Do you remember who that is? In the manga, Vault's first Valkyrie had the Forge Disc Wing and Axel for the driver, and it was broken in the manga by Xander. Now, by the time we see him in Beyblade Burst first season in the show, he's actually already evolved his Beyblade by printing a new one. Okay, so out of all of his evolutions, this is by far the weakest Valtriac. But that's only true for the Takara Tommy Bays. For Hasbro Beyblades, it's a completely different story, and that's because of their lightweight design. Most Beyblades can be battled versus each other more fairly, with the added benefit of anime-like stadiums. So for this video and the main concept, everyone in the show will be blading as if they bought Hasbro Beyblades. This means that I'll be assuming that all the Beyblades are the same weight and the same size despite the season. If all the bladers had Takratomi Beyblades, there would be a difference of at least 30 grams between the first evolution of Beyblades and the last. Meaning that from the Chosey season, it's likely Vault's blading story would abruptly end despite his strength, resonance, or fancy launches. But then again, I could be wrong. Let's start in Beyblade Burst, where Vault starts up the Beguma Academy Bay Club alongside his friends Hancho, Wakia, Shu, Ken, and many others who aren't too important in the series as they never appear again. That's cold bro, but true. Now we know this story all too well. Vault rises in the Beyblade ranks, only this time with his original Valtriac having never been broken. The battles are harder for him. But Vault quickly adjusts his launch, power, and resonance to beat his opponents, just as in the original order of events. Now, this is because throughout the first season, Vault's motivation and bond with Valtriac grow stronger because of the strong battles and opponents he faces. You know, they say you fight the hardest when you start from behind. He trained harder and had to focus more in order to battle with Louis Shirosagi for the regional championship. And still, he'll be finishing as a runner-up for this season, although I think it feels right as Vault hasn't evolved his Beyblade and is technically at a handicap. Vault's journey to becoming a top blader is still hard, but so is his training. But Beyblade that I hear you say, his Valtriac must be so worn that it has to break soon. And you know what? I think you're right. And he will make a new Valtriac in this alternate universe too. It's just that instead of making an evolution, he will reprint the same Bey again and again the original Valtriac. I have one too and it's still in the box. Vault still gets scouted by BC Soul and participates in a world championship. Just like in this show, he works his way up through the rankings, eventually facing off against Shu in the finals while Valtriac's resonance keeps peaking. And as a result of Vault not evolving Valtriac, he works more on his physical strength. And of course, new moves. Sticking to one Beyblade can result in many beneficial perks to your blading in real life like knowing its weakness and strengths through practice and concise repetition focused on improving the spin time or launch patterns. This can as well build muscle memory like some athletes that make their sport look easy. Bladers practice their launch until they consistently get the desired result along with the biggest factor of all, their confidence. Whether it's to beat Shu or another legendary blader, you need confidence in yourself. There are two iconic evolutions for Valtriac in this season, one being upgraded to Genesis Valtriac, having the bound gimmick and then the reboot driver. These took Vault a couple of episodes to get used to and later again with the God Chip and ultimate reboot driver giving Valtriac extra speed and attack potential. In this universe though, Vault has been using his Valtriac for at least 
two years now, he has more confidence in Valtriac's avatar abilities, their bond, and resonance. Being well known for using his one Beyblade, he takes on every opponent and wins all his way to the regional finals, where he battles his biggest rival, Shu. Valt's ability to adapt to his opponents creates new moves and launches that give him an edge over Shu, making Shu even more frustrated and angry at Vault because of his wins. Shu has given up so much and even his own Beyblade. Shu's anger gets the best of him though, as it usually does with you and me. Something weird happens when we get angry though. Our bodies produce hormones that make us do things out of our own control. Take a look at Free de La Hoya when he was facing Fi because Free focused on his anger and power until he hurt himself. Free has very unhealthy ways of coping with his anger, one being self-harm as seen on the Beyblade Chozy manga. It is the reason why he wears his arm guard, which was given to him by Christina. So in other words, Shu lost his cool bro, flipped his lid, he popped a blood vessel and still failed to beat Vault. In this version of events, Vault and Shu will remain rivals and not really friends. Shu's frustration and loathing grows into a deep hatred for Vault. In Labor's Turbo, the story is not as we remember. Since Vault had no need to upgrade his Beyblade, Iger never met Valtriac and was never interested in blading, making Fi and Hyde, or Hearts as some call him, focus on breaking Valtriac. And they do, several times. But as with before, Vault rebuilds Valtriac and trains harder. His eagerness to become a better blader, to help others, and his bait partner only grow. Despite his losses, Vault is still a popular blader around the world. Alas, the Turbo Era never really happens as predicted by Taiga. Since Vault's popularity was rising, it became more commonplace to never upgrade your Beyblade, making the ones that do be called out for being different and even ridiculed for their choice. Now time waits for no man, and so the events unfold in this Turbo season, only with Vault as the central character with his stronger resonance, power, and a new launch he makes. Fi question himself and his motives. Telling Vault breaking a Beyblade isn't as fun when your opponent is as resilient as you, Vault. Breaking Valtriac, but not you, has taught me to respect both a Blader and their Bay. That was my Fi, come on, tell me that was all right. It's tough to believe that Fi could ever change, but let's remember that these are unique circumstances, that Vault's character has grown immensely along with his positive influence. In Big Labor Surprise, Vault is able to go gold turbo with Valtriac, and this still intrigues Dante. But in this course of events, Dante, being influenced by Vault does not create any evolutions for Dragon, keeping his original design of Ace Dragon and rebuilding it once it breaks, just like Vault. Now I believe it's a perfect time to introduce the worst antagonist in this Beyblade Burst theory right after this commercial. Arthur Peregrine is introduced as a very strong character, but if you remember, as with all the other bladers, he'll be blading with a Hasbro Beyblade. And as some of you know, the infinite lock system is actually missing from Prime Apocalypse and Genesis Regalia, making them relatively weak because of their shape. Dante and Vault are both strong bladers that trust in their bay, taking down the Infernos alongside Delta and his Venom Diabolos. But is that it? Is Vault destined to have unlimited plot armor and beat his opponents? Well, no. Vault has lost before, many times, and he's gotten his Beyblade broken in this timeline too. In Beyblade Burst Surge, even though everyone is using Hasbro Beyblades, the combos, parts, and stadiums make it increasingly difficult for Vault to win. Now with Lane Valhalla, things are different. He doesn't care what others think. He evolves his Beyblade, and after breaking the Asahi Brothers Beyblades, they too evolve their Beyblades. Their design, height, and weight gives them just a slight edge over Valtriac now. This is the tipping point where Vault's power, skills, and resonance can only grow so much with his current Bay. And evolution grows a Bay's power exponentially, along with any training that a Bladers do. Shukurunai comes back around this time and challenges Vault, armed with World Surprising. He defeats Vault easily. Now, does that matter to Vault? No. Vault keeps on blading all the way to Beyblade Burst Quad Drive, where Bell shows his power with Dynamite Belial. Vault is still regarded as a legendary blader, but Valtriac can't beat Belial 
Rashad Goodman is still interested in blading and makes himself a Valtriac too. Only he is the one to upgrade Valtriac into Genesis Valtriac. I think that Vault had to evolve Valtriac not only to keep up with other bladers, but to make blading more interesting. Using different parts and even creating unique ones is essential to blading. In this video, I focus on what material Beyblades are actually made of in the show. And until next time, Dad's out.